first order, I'm going to uh, ask uh, uh, Matt to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Armin, if you could lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pleasure, Mr. President. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United the States, States of America, of America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it, for which it stands, stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Armin, the best, best dressed commissioner here. Um, if the township manager could call the roll, please. Where's Bob? Bob's here somewhere. I saw Bob, come on. I don't believe Bob made it. Um, Dan, while we're waiting for Bob, I can also just tell the, um, mention the, um, the board met in executive session. Yes, go ahead. The board met in executive session prior to this evening's public meeting to discuss personnel, um, matters which if discussed in public would violate a lawful privilege. And I think that's it. Thank you. If you'd like in uh, the manager's absence, I can read the roll. Okay, go ahead, Allison. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Norris? Here. Commissioner Brockington? Here. Commissioner Armin? Here. Commissioner Rappaport? Here. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld? Here. Commissioner Holland? Here. And Commissioner Pransky? Everyone is here. Okay. Um, I'll ask, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the Board of Commissioners regular meeting minutes dated August 18th, 2021. All in favor say aye. 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 I will make a motion to accept the executive summary financial report of the manager secretary for the month of August, 2021. All those in favor say aye. 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 And similarly, I'll move to accept the accounts paid report for the month of August, 2021. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, uh, number six, uh, public hearing. Allison, did you say, you, do you see a court reporter here? Yes. Okay. Anita, are you here? Lisa Neal is listed as the court reporter. Ah, hi, Great. Lisa. It says court reporter next to your name. All right. Um, okay. All right. So I think we're going to open a public hearing on a proposed ordinance. This is the um, ordinance amending the Cheltenham Township zoning map. Uh, it is a rezoning from an MU2 mixed use district to the MU1 mixed use district. It's been discussed at prior meetings, including the Building and Zoning Committee meeting. Uh, we're gonna begin by identifying a number of exhibits. Exhibit one is an attested copy of the ordinance. Exhibit two is a proof of publication for legal notices published in the Times Chronicle on August 29 and September 5. Exhibit three is an email filing an attested copy of the ordinance with the Montgomery County Law Library. Exhibit four is the posting of a legal notice on the township website and bulletin board on, dated August 23. Exhibit five is a review letter from the Montgomery County Planning Commission dated August 16. Exhibit six is an email from Mr. Sekawungu, Director of Planning and Zoning, confirming the ordinance was sent to the Montgomery County Planning Commission for review. Exhibit seven is the, town, the Township Planning Commission recommendation dated August 23. Exhibit eight is a recommendation of the Public Affairs Committee dated September 22. Exhibit nine is a Board of Commissioners authorization to advertise a public hearing dated July 21. And exhibit 10 is uh, proof that the property was posted. And I think I didn't mention it, but I believe this is referred to as, uh, I think it is it, um, 105 and 115 Glenside Avenue. So with that, um, would anybody who cares, any member of the public who wishes to comment on the proposed ordinance uh, indicate by raising your hand and the assistant township manager will call on you one at a time? Allison, any comments or questions? I don't see any. Okay. All right. Um, is it, some, does a 
Commissioner want to make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, the public hearings closed on the proposed rezoning. Customarily, the board has sometimes, most times, decided to take a vote on the proposed ordinance at this time. Okay, then we'll uh, we'll continue with that, and we'll take a, a vote on this proposed ordinance. Um, so the the motion has been the, there's a well. I'll make the need motion. A motion. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll. I'll move to um, to adopt the ordinance as just described and as is clearly stated in the agenda. That ordinance number is 2427-21. Could we make comments, Mr. President? Sure. Uh, sure. Go ahead, Ann. Shall I? Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I'll be as short as I can be. Um, so last week I did raise concerns uh, about a zoning map change that commits this township to a sort of tail wagging the dog situation where 14, 000, approximately 14,000 square feet of intense and dense zoning creates an opportunity, that's what it was called, to impose more intense demands on the larger 65,000 square foot properties. It commits the township to a zoning map change that does not improve stormwater challenges in a desperate township and to map changes that do not guarantee that a subsequent development goes beyond minimum statutory stormwater management compliance. It commits the township to a zoning map change that will allow 60 more apartments in, an, in a township already heavily imbalanced toward rental properties and these on a congested little street. And it commits a zoning map change that would permit a reduction from almost 68,000 square feet of leasable commercial space to about 15,000 square feet. Now, in answer to my question last week about how such changes could benefit the township, Brian, Mr. Regley, uh, you explained last week that one way the township benefits by a reduction in commercial area in Glenside's business district is that in today's economy, apartments provide better tax rateables to the township. Okay, um, you're the expert on that and I'll, I'll let that stand, but are you willing tonight to share with us how much taxes the township currently is getting from those properties in discussion, the uh, mixed use one and the mixed use two, and how many more taxes you project that this zoning map change will help you to provide. And you could give those please both with and without a proposed LERDA. Um, Mark, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask my counsel, Mark yep. Jonas to, to speak to that if, he, if you'd like, or if you'd like me to speak to it, I, I will do so. Yeah, uh, Brian, let me, um, uh, good evening. I'm, I'm Mark Jonas. I, I represent uh, the petitioner for this legislative map change. Um, uh, this question was asked uh, last week and all, and this is just a, a, a zoning matter at the moment. Um, so we're not, as far as land development, uh, we don't have the exact calculations of before and after tax revenues. However, we do know that this will be, uh, actually it was said so at one of the review meetings, this will be an excellent opportunity to create zoning for a use on a map change that is essentially contemplated by the township uh, when it adopted the MU1 district, which I believe even Commissioner Rappaport um, 
uh, had supported. The MU1 talks about uh, the desire to, this is a legislative purpose to encourage economic development, to encourage commercial development design that will reflect community identity and protect and enhance the character and property values of adjacent and nearby neighborhoods, encourage development of new buildings located adjacent to transit. And certainly this property uh, is located uh, adjacent to transit. Uh, we also note that the property was arbitrarily uh, split zoned, and this is an effort uh, to, to remedy that. We've had positive recommendations from public affairs, from the Township Planning Commission, from the Building and Zoning Committee, uh, from the, uh, even from, and from the uh, County Planning Commission, which said the following, that this map change, and this is 1.6 acres uh, to zone it to MU1, and there is MU1 to the side, there is MU1 across the street, the County Planning Commission said that this map change is generally consistent with the adopted county comprehensive plan. Uh, the 2005 Township Comprehensive Plan identifies the area as mixed use. According to the county, this falls within a rail station walk shed. It should support pedestrian traffic to and from the train station. The Montgomery County Planning Commission generally supports the adoption of this map amendment as it appears to be generally consistent with the adopted uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, the 2040 comprehensive plan and the shared vision. The comments we had, uh, other than of course from Commissioner Rappaport, uh, during the review meetings of the several committees were that this is about opportunities for Glenside. It is a great opportunity. And it noted that the zoning line was arbitrarily placed. So we could get sidetracked a little bit with Commissioner Rappaport's uh, focusing on really matters that are not directly relevant to an opportunity to make this part of Glenside Avenue much more robust and vibrant and consistent with the vision of the majority of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, and we ask that the Board of Commissioners proceed with a vote to adopt the legislative amendment. Yeah. And but, be, but, before I ask for additional comments, but, so Brian, I'm gonna I'm let you make a quick comment. I just, but, want, I just wanna, I, want, I do wanna respond directly to Ann's question out of respect to thank that. Thank you. The tax, yeah, the tax was paid. a question. Sure. The taxes paid to the township uh, in February were $18,795. Taxes paid to the school district were $75,357. And in terms of what those tax rateables will be in the future, as you know, Anne, it will depend on the appraisal of the property by the planning, uh, by the county uh, tax assessment authority. I don't have any insight into how they would appraise that. Um, there are comparables, I'm sure, in Cheltenham and other areas in eastern Montgomery County that you could look to. Uh, I wouldn't be able to comment on those directly at this time. Okay. Thank, thank uh, you, uh, Mr. Rayquist. Mr. President, but, let me let me continue with just a, a couple more comments. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I'll be it's as brief, quick please. as I can. Um, but uh, part of what you were maintaining last week, and it's in the minutes, and it was recorded, that you you did say that this will result in greater tax revenue or greater uh, tax rateables for the township, and I was just trying to ascertain what you project that to be. So let me let me move on and just uh, for the record, um, state that it is worth considering that maintaining mixed use to zoning would also allow for a healthy mix of apartments and commercial, just not at the cost to the township of increased density and heat island land coverage that the zoning map change to M mixed use one would allow by right. I also found it pretty astounding that in yesterday's comprehensive planning meeting, so many friends of development argued strongly for the township to require as other municipalities do, that was what they said, in its saldo regulations, among other places, that in such circumstances, developers frequently are required to pay um, payments in lieu of green space to those municipalities. And they recommended that we require uh, by ordinance such fees for open space in our cell though. I'll get to that later on in the meeting. Short of commitment by the applicant to mitigating the negative impacts or the potential 
negative impacts of the zoning map change. Um, I will not be uh, supporting this vote, but I do sincerely hope that this so-called opportunity will in fact prove to be the benefit to the township that you all um, maintain. So thank okay. you. Thank you. In, unless there are any other comments, I'm just going to, uh, for the public, make it clear that this is a public meeting. However, this same issue and discussion has been discussed at quite uh, lengthy meetings, at least two prior times. And those meetings were uh, open public meetings. They were on the record and they are documented. Um, so if anybody wants further discussion, they can look back at some of the prior uh, two meetings that were held on this. So now um, not seeing any other uh, commissioners looking to make a comment, I'm going to ask that we call the vote. There's a motion on the floor. Commissioner Brockington. Aye. Commissioner Holland. Aye. Commissioner Norris. Aye. Commissioner Pransky. Aye. Commissioner Rappaport. Abstain. Commissioner Arman. Aye. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the ordinance is approved with six yeas and one abstention. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so the, number seven on the agenda is a second public meeting. Mr. Bagley? Yeah, we're gonna open a public hearing on an ordinance that's been discussed before. This is an ordinance that would amend uh, the township code to um, put some uh, requirements on fences being erected with the finished side facing adjacent properties and rights of way. Uh, the finished side shall be considered the side without the structural members exposed. It also in, um, imposes some requirements regarding fencing not being permitted within the street right of way. And it gives some, some examples about um, types of things or types of fencing and where the location of that street right of way may be located. Um, we're going to mark several exhibits. They are exhibit one, an attested copy of the ordinance. Exhibit two, proof of publication of the legal no notices published in the Times Chronicle on September 5 and September 12. Exhibit three is an email filing and attested copy of the ordinance with the county law library. Exhibit four is a posting of the legal notice on the township website and bulletin board dated August 23. Exhibit five is a review letter from the Montgomery County Planning Commission. I believe they supported this proposal as they did in the last um, public hearing. Exhibit six is an email from Mr. Sekawungu, Director of Planning and Zoning, confirming the ordinance was sent to the County Planning Commission for review. Exhibit seven is the Township Planning Commission recommendation dated August 23. Exhibit eight is a recommendation of the Building and Zoning Committee dated September 1. And exhibit nine is the Board of Commissioners authorization to advertise a public hearing. Uh, and just wanna point out the, that the posting of the legal notice, um, oh, it wouldn't be posted because this is not a zoning map change. I'm thinking of the prior ordinance. Uh, so with that, uh, just as a little bit of background, part of this derives from a, um, a uh, dispute between two public, between two neighbors. Uh, it resulted in a proposed ordinance. Um, I, this ordinance will be um, applied retroactively if it's adopted. And um, I am willing to entertain any questions from the public or any public comment that they may have. If uh, you could indicate by raising your hand in the Zoom call and the assistant township manager will recognize you. Any hands, Allison? I do not see any. Okay, with that, is there a, a motion from a commissioner to close the public hearing? So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, as we pointed out in the last one, uh, the, customarily the board would vote uh, at this point to, uh, uh, vote on consideration of the of the ordinance. Okay, so I'll, I'll move to adopt an ordinance amending chapter 295, uh, zoning article four, as noted. Any 
comments or questions from commissioners? Just a quick clarification, please. Um, Mr. Bagley, did you say it does apply retroactively? No, it does not apply retroactively. Thank it you. only applies prospectively. Right. That's what I thought, and I misheard, and that's why I'm asking for clarification. Thanks. Yeah, comments or questions? Uh, Bob, can you call the roll? Sure. Uh, Mr. President, this is Ordinance 2428-21. Uh, Commissioner Brockington. Commissioner Holland. Aye. Commissioner Norris. Aye. Commissioner Pransky. He may be offline temporarily. Okay. Commissioner Rappaport. Aye. Commissioner Armin. Aye. Commissioner Sigmundfeld. Aye. Mr. Chairman, this ordinance is approved with six yeas and zero nays. Okay. So I believe we've um, Joe, we close the public hearing. Yes. So our, our so Lisa, uh, thank you very much. I think uh, you can you can drive home. <laughs> Stay safe. Thank you. Um, brings us to number eight on the agenda. I'm going to call upon uh, uh, Chief Fry. I believe he has uh, two resolutions uh, presentations uh, to make for. Uh, police officers who have given many years of dedicated service to our township, and we are happy to uh, recognize them, and we only wish that we were able to recognize them in person, um, but not able to do that. Uh, Chief, can you, uh, can you introduce the resolutions? Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. I actually have four, Commissioner. Oh, um, four. And it's four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, four, sorry. Okay, um, I'll, I'll get to reading. None of these officers were able to make it tonight, so um, I'll just read these uh, resolutions out. Uh, the first one's for Officer Chris Gallagher, and it reads, uh, Resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, whereas the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, with immense appreciation and respect, honors Christopher Gallagher, badge 946, more than 29 years of distinguished and dedicated service as a Cheltenham Township Police Officer, whereas Christopher Gallagher was sworn in as a Cheltenham Township Police Officer on September 23rd, 1991, after serving many years with Cheltenham Township EMS. He graduated from the Philadelphia Police Academy, was assigned to the Patrol Division, where he distinguished himself as a dedicated officer. In addition, he served over 16 years as a valued member of the Community Policing Unit, Serving as a bike officer, their officer was actively involved in creating the department's successful cop camp program. In addition, he served the department as a background investigator and first aid CPR instructor. He was also a member of the Montgomery County Major Incident Response Team. Whereas during his career, Christopher Gallagher proudly served the Cheltenham community, he received numerous departmental commendations and official letters in recognition of his outstanding police service, including two citations for heroism, and as well as many heartfelt letters of thanks from citizens. His work ethic and dedication to serving and protecting others has been sorely missed since his retirement on June 30th, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners on Ch uh, of Cheltenham Township duly convened in regular session this 21st day of July, 2021, does hereby officially honor and thank Christopher Gallagher his years of outstanding service to Cheltenham Township and extends its best wishes for his success and all his future endeavors further directed that this resolution be spread in full upon the minutes of the meeting, a copy thereof be presented to Mr. Gallagher, in witness whereof uh, Daniel Norris, president of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, had, has here unto set his hand, caused the seal of the Township of Cheltenham to be made part thereof done in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, in the year of the Township of Cheltenham, the 122nd. All right, um, moving on to uh, Officer Joe Marcy, who was uh, my training officer. 
uh, resolution of the Board of Cheltenham, uh, Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, whereas the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, with great admiration and respect, honors Joseph Marcy on the occasion of retirement after more than 29 years of dedicated service to the Cheltenham Township Police Department. Whereas Joseph Marcy was appointed as a Cheltenham Police Officer on June 1st, 1992, previously, previously serving as a police officer with the Jenkintown Police Department and Sellersville Police Departments. He was a highly skilled crash investigator who served in a variety of assignments, including field training officer, Montgomery County Detectives Crash Investigation Team, DUI Task Force, and Montgomery County Truck Enforcement Team. 2003, he was assigned to the Highway Safety Unit, was responsible for crash investigations and reconstruction truck enforcement, abandoned autos, and DUI enforcement. Whereas during his career, Joseph Marcy earned numerous official commendations and unit citations for outstanding performance, including an accommodation from the Montgomery County District Attorney for his crash reconstruction and investigative skills for a fatal pedestrian crash. In addition, he has received numerous letters of appreciation from residents and businesses resulting from his dedication and service to the community his experience and dedication to Dooley, to Dooley has been sorely missed since his retirement on July 31st of 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township duly convened in regular session this 29th day of September 2021, does hereby officially honor Joseph Marcy's impressive career, wishes him good fortune in all his future endeavors. It is further directed that this resolution be spread upon spread in full upon the minutes of the meeting that a copy thereof be presented to Mr. Morrissey. In witness whereof, Daniel Norris, president of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, has hereunto set his hand and caused a seal of the Township of Cheltenham to be made part thereof. Done in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, in the year of the Township of Cheltenham, the 122nd. Uh, Officer Mark Inhart, resolution of the Board of uh, Board of Commissioners, Cheltenham Township, whereas the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, with immense appreciation and respect, honors Officer Mark Inhart for over 20 years of distinguished and dedicated service as a Cheltenham Township Police Officer. Whereas Mark Inhart was appointed as a Cheltenham Township Police Officer on June 4th of 2001, was sworn in on November 20th, 2001, after his graduation from the Philadelphia Police Academy. During his career, Officer Ginhart was assigned to the patrol division where he distinguished himself as a dedicated officer. In addition, he received um, departmental accommodations and official letters in recognition of his outstanding police service, as well as many heartfelt letters of thanks from citizens. Whereas Mark Ginhart's proudly served this community for over 28 years as, as both a member of the Cheltenham Police Department and Cheltenham Emergency Medical Service. Prior to his appointment as a Cheltenham Township Police Officer. Officer Ginhart served eight years as a full-time member of the Cheltenham Township Emergency Medical Services. His work ethic and dedication to serving and protecting others has been sorely missed since his retirement on August 26th of 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township duly convened in regular session this 29th day of September 8th, 2021, does hereby officially honor and thank Mark Inhart for his 28 years of outstanding service to the Cheltenham Township, to Cheltenham Township and extend its best wishes for his success and all his future endeavors. Further directed that this resolution be spread in full upon the minutes of this meeting, that a copy thereof be conveyed to Mr. Ginhart. Witness thereof, Daniel Norris, President of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, is here on to set his hand, cause the seal of the township to be made part thereof. Done in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, in the year of the Township of Cheltenham, the 122nd. And um, finally, uh, Officer Jackie Hinchy, Jacqueline Hinchy, that's a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, whereas the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, with great admiration and respect, honors Jacqueline Hinchy on, uh, on the occasion of her retirement after more than 18 years of dedicated service with the Cheltenham Township Police Department. Whereas Jacqueline Hinchy was appointed as a Cheltenham Police Officer on August, uh, April 14th of 2003, after serving in the United States Navy. A veteran of the Iraq War, 
She was activated for Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2005. She was assigned to the Community Policing Unit in early 2005. During this time, she served 10 years as a school resource officer and school liaison officer, working closely with students, parents, teachers, and administrators in all the schools located in the township. Additionally, she was a member of the Recruitment Unit, Bike Unit, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Committee, and participated in countless community events. Whereas during her career, Jacqueline Hinchy was awarded a unit citation for the arrest of three suspects in a home invasion robbery. In addition, she has received numerous letters of appreciation from residents and businesses resulting from her dedication and service to the community. Her experience and dedication to duty has been sorely missed since her retirement on September 18th, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township duly convened in regular session this 29th day of September of 2021 does hereby officially honor Jacqueline Hinchy's impressive career and wishes her good fortune in all her future endeavors. It's further directed that this resolution be spread and fall upon the minutes of this meeting and that a copy thereof be presented to Ms. Hinchy. In witness uh, whereof Daniel Norris, president of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township has hereunto set his hand and caused the seal of the Township of Cheltenham and Cheltenham to be made part thereof. Done in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, in the year of the Township of Cheltenham, the 122nd. Uh, thank you very much, Chief. And I'm I'm going to state again: we we really do lose something um, uh, significant by not being able to personally uh, thank these uh, four officers for their long tenure of service to the township. I, I really wish that we had the opportunity to do it in person, to shake their hands and take a picture of them. Uh, we owe a significant debt of gratitude to each of them. Each of them has kept us safe 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, for many years of service. Uh, and we thank each one of them. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move ahead on the agenda to number 12. I'm going to call upon uh, Commissioner Mitch Siegmundfeld to present a resolution uh, honoring Mike Fleming. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it is my personal and professional pleasure to be able to acknowledge uh, the retirement and the longstanding contributions. It says 10 years, but it's shocking to think how many things Mike has been involved with. Resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, with immense appreciation and respect, honors Michael Fleming for over 10 years of distinguished and dedicated service as a Cheltenham Township Public Works Coordinator Code Official. Whereas during his career, Michael Fleming coordinated and oversaw utility companies on several projects, including liquid fuels planning, the MS4 program, flood project activities, bidding of public works projects, traffic signal plan reviews, PennDOT reviews, state and county winter service agreements, state highway occupancy projects, state manhole adjustment projects, state salt contracts, and administered and enforced uh, all property maintenance and curb sidewalk ordinances within the township. Michael Fleming proudly served the Cheltenham community and his work ethic and dedication has been sorely missed since his retirement on August 27th, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners at Cheltenham Township duly convened in regular session this 29th day of September, AD 2021, does hereby officially honor and thank Michael Fleming for his years of outstanding service to Cheltenham Township and extends its best wishes for success in all his future endeavors. It is further directed that this resolution be spread in full upon the minutes of this meeting that a copy thereof be presented to Mr. Fleming. In witness whereof, and I, I am not Daniel Norris, but I am Commissioner Zygmunt Belt of Public Works and, and speaking on behalf of President Norris for the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township have hereunto set their hand and caused the seal of the Township of Cheltenham to be made a part thereof. Done in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, in the year of the Township of Cheltenham, the 122nd, signed by the Board of Commissioners, uh, Daniel Norris, and just an acknowledgement of so much work 
and so many things that Mike has been involved with. And we will miss him because, you know, he, it's a difficult person that has that level of expertise. And he's given us uh, that expertise and experience over those 10 years to a fabulous degree. So thank you very much, Mike. And you clearly deserve the honor and the acknowledgement. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate it. Commissioner Sigmundfeld, I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you, you enumerated a, a very long list of things that Mr. Fleming was involved in. Uh, I've, I've noted that a lot of these things aren't finished. How come he's retiring? <laughs> why, why are we accepting his retirement? That's I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand this. I don't really Mr. think we had a choice. <laughs> Mr. President. Uh, uh, yes, and. Yeah, um, I, also not in the list uh, that was very lengthy and went on and on. Um, but I, also uh, what we'll miss is your tremendous liaison on behalf of individual property owners when um, they were having issues with some of the uh, utilities and, and other uh, state and uh, regional entities. Uh, and you helped resolve those um, uh, challenges. So um, we appreciated your fairness and your willing to, um, to represent those needs. And that is very important. So thank, thank you. you and happy, thank you, healthy Mr. retirement. Thank you, appreciate that. And Mike, I'll just add that uh, I, I may be the one who signed the resolution, but there's absolutely no doubt in my mind, and there shouldn't be in yours, that every single one of the commissioners uh, uh, owes, uh, owes a debt to you and, and, and a, uh, appreciation for all the work that you've done. Uh, it, you really have uh, gone above and beyond uh, both to the commissioners and as Anne stated, to our residents. So thank you. Here, here. Thank you very much. Um, okay, before I go on to the next agenda item, it's been pointed out that uh, we just uh, presented uh, five resolutions now, four to police officers and one to uh, Mr. Fleming. Uh, we need to uh, vote and adopt those resolutions. Uh, if nobody objects and no slight to any of the five individuals, uh, I'm going to make a motion that we adopt uh, all five of those resolutions noted in the agenda as 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So I will make that motion. All those in favor of adopting those resolutions say aye. 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 Thank you, Allison, for keeping me on the straight and narrow here. Uh, number 13, approval of expenditures over $2,500. Um, I will move to approve all expenditures that have been recommended by at, at our September meetings by the Public Works Committee, the Public Safety Committee, the Public Affairs Committee, and the Finance Committee meetings. Uh, all those expenditures uh, that were recommended at those meetings, I move to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Number 14, um, Public Works Committee met on September 1st. Commissioner Zygmunt Feld, you have a couple of items to discuss. I do, however, that uh, approval on number 13 may eliminate some of the things that we need to speak about other than to, to note them. Uh, the Public Works Committee did meet on September 1st. We have four items to, to consider. There was a item A, 14A, approval for Gannett Fleming to begin the engineering and design work for phases one, two, and three of the Tokeny Creek at Gimblefield project in the amount of $26,160. Um, do we need to have discussion on that? Because technically we've, oh, I'm sorry, it's 2,500. So pardon me. Um, any uh, questions or comments? Do we, do we uh, have a, our township engineer available to just give a, a brief, summary of that uh, that project or Mr. Zinkowski? Uh, I, I can take care of it if you want. Chris, right, Chris. please. Sure, uh, good evening commissioners. So that that project as some of you may recall when we visited the Gimbal Field 
a while back, uh, we were talking about the trail and all, we walked over to the creek and we looked across the creek onto the Ashbourne roadside and there was a big uh, gaping hole, broken storm pipe and a head wall that was right next to the sanitary sewer and it was also starting the road itself towards the embankment of uh, the resident, I can't think of his name right now, uh, right next to it where there's a pool. Um, we did do a video camera of the pipe uh, a few months back, in inspected the pipe from Ashbourne Road out to that opening. Uh, there were some small visible cracking, nothing to, uh, nothing to be concerned about other than the tail end down there. But due to the impact what it's doing with the sanitary sewer right there and the erosion along that private property, uh, this, kind of, this kind of job we're looking to uh, proceed with. This portion of the payment, the 26160 is for the engineers actually to physically go in now and do the actual design work, reach out to um, the DEP, which I think they already have uh, to a smaller portion, but get more serious with them, find out about the permitting, get everything going, uh, things like that. So this is just initial design work for the engineering, getting everything going before it even go out to uh, bid for that work. And Mr. Cloro, there were a number of neighbors who were involved in that uh, review process, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, I think that was Mr. Shurtino, but yes. there were other neighbors as well. Yes, I don't, remember, I don't recall the last name, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, any questions or comments from members of the board? None being seen. Um, so I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the engineering and design work, uh, say aye. 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 Okay. Item 14 be approval of the amended right of way drawings for the Glenside Flood Protection Project Unit 2 and project number DGS 181 8, phase 1, dated June 30, 2021, following legal review of the 2001 agreement by the township solicitor and more detailed engineering review by the township engineer to more fully understand the amendments and requirements of the agreement. Uh, this has both legal and engineering issues. Mr. Bagley, do you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, I think I sent an email earlier in the week that said that uh, to the extent that we were required to um, adopt amendments to uh, the, uh, that would include the easements that we had to acquire, we un are obliged under that 2001 agreement to take into account revisions and amendments and acquire easements to the extent that uh, drain, I think it used the term drainage easements that are necessary for any revisions to the plans. So from a legal perspective, we are obliged to acquire additional easements as the plans are revised. Okay, um, do we have any engineering comment on that or should we just move to a vote? Move to a vote. Okay. Uh, call to question, all those in favor of item 14B to approve of the amended right of way uh, drawings for the Glenside Flood Protection Unit, say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay, we got a 14C, awarding of a contract for furnishing bituminous materials to Glasgow Inc., Glenside PA, in the amount of $26,062.50 from October 1, 2021 through September 30, 2022. Um, any questions or comments? I know Mr. Fleming's not here to, to weigh in on that, so we're, we're lost to some degree without him, but any questions or comments from members of the board? None being shown, I'll call to question. All those in favor of approval of the awarding of the contract, uh, say aye. 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 No, I'm no opposition. And item 14D, awarding of a contract for furnishing equipment at an hourly rental rate. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> to Glasgow Inc., Glenside PA, and Riley Sweeping Inc., Fairless Hills PA, from October 1, 2021 through September uh, 20, 2022. Is that correct? September 20 rather than September 30? I would think it's September 30 because it runs the duration from yeah, October yeah. through uh, September. Am I right? In that that case, should be amended to, to, to uh, September 30. Mine says 30. Okay. Mine, mine has 30 also. Mine, mine says 20. 20. Mine well, says I must 20. be working off of something data because mine says 20. I apologize. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments? All right. None being shown. Call to question. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, and so I believe that uh, concludes the business of public works. Uh, I'll move for approval of the minutes uh, from the September 1st, 2021 meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, building and zoning, Commissioner Pransky. Uh, thank you, Mr. Resident. Uh, building and zoning, we have uh, one. Why? <laughs> Someone's coming in late. <laughs> um, but it's nice to know whoever it is agrees. Um, we, <laughs> we did meet on September 1st, and we have one item to bring to the board. Uh, this is to clean up a discrepancy in our code. And I will hand this over to Mr. Bagley uh, after I read it, and he can explain it. Uh, this is for an authorization to amend the zoning code and other parts of the township code to have the building and zoning committee review and take action upon the most common applications from the boards of historical and architectural view. And the public works committee will continue to review and act on other codified applications and matters, including vacant ground and proposed subdivisions, land developments within the historic districts. This is also a move to make Mitch's meetings a little shorter. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's um, It was pointed out by Mr. Sikawungu that there's a discrepancy in the township code. And this is to move uh, all of those actions having to do with the Bahars to the Building and Zoning Committee. And I've begun drafting that ordinance if this is approved. Are there any questions among the commissioners? Okay, like I said, this is housekeeping and we will be doing the same things except now Mitch has one thing off his agenda. Uh, do we take a vote on this to approve right now? Yes, okay. yes, okay. yeah, just to authorize, go ahead and doing it. Uh, uh, all those in favor of authorizing this, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Any confused? Okay, uh, that concludes the business of the Building and Zoning Committee and I ask for acceptance of the minutes of the, the, the September 1st meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A public one. safety committee met on September 22nd. Commissioner Brockington, tell us about that. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, we did meet on September 22nd, and tonight we have one item to vote on, item 16A, authorized PennDOT to proceed with a truck study along Church Road in Sheltonham Township um, per uh, their letter dated September 22nd, 2021. Uh, I might ask, are there any questions about this particular item from the commissioners? No. He hearing and seeing none, I... Yes. I, I yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. And I was looking down at my phone. Okay. Commissioner Rappaport. Well, thank you. Um, I, I'm in favor of proceeding, but um, during the week when I had a chance to really read the details of the letter, I sent our manager um, a... Uh, a letter that, that discussed some of those items, um, some of the things they actually, uh, PennDOT actually asked us uh, our, our, for our authorization on certain things that uh, were additional. And there were other things that I think need to be added, at, including um, certain portions of Greenwood Avenue that were not included mm -hmm. uh, and certain parts of the truck study that I questioned uh, the, their mission. So um, what I'd like to do is, is go ahead and suggest we move forward, you know, move that we move forward, but um, uh, pending uh, some of those additions, also spraying was one of those uh, concerns. So um, pending uh, additional language on those things uh, to move forward. Mr. Township Manager, do you uh, have any comments in receipt to those items? Yes, I've received those. I have not had a chance to compare the two lists, but uh, Mr. Chairman, if you wouldn't mind in your safety committee meeting uh, next month, we can actually bring those forward and prepare another motion to expand the scope uh, beyond this. Okay. So it looks like we, we want to table um, item 16A, until you're able to bring us more information. I think you should move forward on this I, one, but it I, will, there will be other items we'll bring. You will have other, okay. Correct. All right, before, before we and, do go and further. Could I just clarify? Ahead. Let me just clarify. In, in pursuing um, that 
um, that okay to PennDOT, I think they need to be put on notice that there are still some additions that we might be adding. Okay, so noted. Um, before we do take a vote, I do see Teresa hands up. So Allison, can you let her in? I'm, I will allow comment on this at this point. Oh, good evening, gentlemen. Yes, good um, evening, Teresa. We're sorry that we missed uh, last week's meeting, but we appreciate the fact that Bob sent out the update and we we're able to uh, attend tonight. Um, we were we had three kind of important questions that we would like to have answered tonight uh, that are not related to the specifics of the document. But the first question would be, is the township uh, generally OK with these PennDOT recommendations? And do they have reservations? Do they want to have additions? And is it actually open to um, any community review at this point? Uh -huh. um, the recommendations that PennDOT made, I think, are um, outstanding uh, in that they are looking to take a lot of the items that yourself, Teresa, and the commissioners have made and actually are looking to approve those. Um, because of the dollar amount, these items will be discussed during the our budget um, meetings that the board will have, the work, work sessions. So there's where um, your opportunity to have conversation and dialogue about getting items within the budget, because right now we don't have those dollars. But I think anytime PennDOT comes back and says, here are all these items that they're looking to approve, um, I think is a good thing. And we should look to fund those different options. Okay. Our request is particular to have a follow-up meeting with our commissioners and yourself, Bob. Um, because we don't understand all the language and we have uh, a good many questions. We don't want to tie up the meeting at length, but we would like to see if we could have some kind of a Zoom with the neighbors, uh, maybe this week or next, probably next week, and um, go over some of the questions because we don't understand all the technicalities and we are very concerned about the strong language they're using about truck restrictions specific to our request on church and Greenwood. I mean, there's a lot of nuance in the document, um, you know, specific to site distance studies, but they don't include driveways. Well, there's 14 driveways between. Um, Teresa, could, could, I, could I make a recommendation? Yes, go ahead. Because it, it sounds like you have multiple questions. Multiple questions. Yeah. yeah if if it would be possible to to sort of just draft, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. submit sure. them so yeah. that we can work on them ahead of time, and yes. then once we made some progress, then maybe we can do the Zoom with, with yes, the rest. That's fine. Okay. Well, no problem with that. Um, we do appreciate uh, the fact that you've been very uh, supportive in moving this along, and. Um, appreciate your advocacy with us. Uh, we were um, particularly um, pleased with having to meet with the District 6 officials, although it kind of came as a bit of a surprise because we didn't have heads up on it. It was a little bit confusing as to what the agenda was and who was attending, but we do appreciate the excellent facilitation that took place with uh, Representative Nelson and his staff, they really followed through with their homework on it. So uh, thank you very much to um, commissioners that participated and to Bob for helping us along with this. So we do need a little bit more, um, uh, you know, conversation about the detail. So Teresa, we'll look for your information. You'll send an email to Bob and to the commissioners. Did she freeze up? Are you guys able to hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think she, she froze, froze up. I think she froze. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to move forward. Thanks. Uh, we're going to okay. call the question um, item 16A. All those in favor of authorizing PennDOT to proceed with the truck study, say aye. 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 
Thank you. And Mr. President, that's all we have tonight um, for public safety. So I would just call for the approval of the minutes um, for our meeting that were held on September 22nd, 2021. Mr. Mr. President, in favor of accepting Mr. The public President. Yes. I'm sorry, there was a question about the minutes. Um, the the uh, agenda and, and uh, my recollection of the vote on the renewal of the Leeds online system uh, from that meeting was $4,065. And yet uh, in the minutes it's listed as 9,210. Could somebody clarify why we went from the 4,000 amount to the 9,000? Unless that's a typo. Because I think we approved 4,000, not, not 92. I don't have anything on the 9,000. I, I submitted the 4,000. Right, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, in the minutes, um, it refers to uh, 92, that's item B in the minutes, says 9210. I'm thinking it's got to be a typo. I, I don't know where the 9,000 came from. All right. Well, so my point is that the minutes need to be uh, corrected so we need to correct, or something. We need to correct those minutes. So we will approve the minutes with that correction noted by Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you. All, all those in favor of approving the minutes as uh, they will be corrected, say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. Number 17, Public Affairs Committee, um, Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Public Affairs Committee met on uh, September 22nd. Included in the business was discussion of facilities uh, and the manager uh, recommended for the commissioners to each send three names of residents in their wards to serve on uh, the committee uh, to examine uh, facilities as part of the township's effort to uh, problem solve and uh, reach out uh, for a more productive way forward. Um, so I would just remind uh, the board to please get this going in an expeditious way. Um, and. Uh, we have no other things to vote on tonight. So um, I do have a, another slight correction to the minutes. Um, a, in my remarks about uh, the shovel shop, I was referring to a public private partnership like that with Curtis Hall. Um, not, I mentioned the Valley Green in light, but it was not as like the partnership. The partnership would, would be in the same vein as Curtis Hall. So with that correction, uh, I now move acceptance of the regular meeting minutes from September 22nd and the revised minutes from the August 11th meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Number 18, the pension board uh, met on September 10th, 2021. Uh, I chair the pension board. There were no items that need our attention or recommendation or discussion. So I'll move acceptance of the pension board uh, minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number 19, finance committee met September 22nd. Commissioner Holland, you're on. Yep, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have three items up for um, action today. 19A, uh, approval of final contract for the new Township Health Insurance Program through Villanova, Insurance Partners and uh, Pennsylvania Municipal Health Insurance Cooperative, administered by Benecon Group with Independence Blue Cross, serving as a third party administrator to provide employees access to the Independence Blue Cross network of providers as amended. Um, the amendment being the renewal um, after the uh, three-year term, uh, it would renew for uh, one year. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, question, no. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Just, uh, I want a clarification. A third party administrator to provide employees access 
does this exclude retirees or does it incorporate retirees? Mr. Chairman, that would incorporate retirees. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I had a question about um, uh, a sentence on page six of the agreement. And I had sent an email previously about that language. I'm not sure if that's the same as the amendment or it's a different issue. It wasn't at the finance committee meeting. Um, um, I'm sorry, could you specify uh, what, what, where's the on, uh, item? On, on, in the agreement, article Roman numeral six, page six, there's a sentence in paragraph five that begins, if a rescission is not provided by November 30, the member is liable for all benefits for their eligible employees for the next 13 months. I think there's a problem with that sentence and I'd be willing to work with Benicon to just adjust it or eliminate it. I, I don't think it means exactly what they intended it to mean. And um, other than that, I didn't have any other issues. I'd ask you if you approve it, just to approve it without that sentence and I'll work with Benicon to either come up with a different sentence or modify it some way. Okay. Are there any objections to the solic uh, solicitor's recommendation? No. Okay. Do we have any other questions? All right. So I, I would move, um, you know, with the, the modification of that um, line sentence. in sentence in section uh, six of the document. Oh. Uh, so it's been moved in. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. All those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 All right, awesome, thank you. Um, we are now on item B, authorization to issue a request for proposals for Zoning Hearing Board Legal Counsel for 2022. Any questions? All right, I so move. All those in favor of uh, authorizing the issuance of a uh, re request for proposals for the Zoning Hearing Board Legal Council, say aye. 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 Item 19, <laughs> the adoption of a resolution authorizing signatories to execute a grant contract with the U.S. Department of Justice Emergency Federal Law Enforcement Assistance Grant Program for reimbursement of overtime in the amount of $134,930.96 for responding to civil disturbances and unrest in 2020. Uh, Bob, if you could just give just a brief summary. So what this is, is we have the opportunity to recapture overtime money uh, and due to the efforts of uh, Kim in the EOC and Allison and Ken Hellendahl, uh, we look to um, recoup uh, the full amount that was requested. Well, thank, thank you for that. And thanks to all those involved. And I would so move. Excellent job, Kim, Ken, and Allison. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, there being no further action, I would move acceptance of the meeting minutes. All those in favor of accepting the finance committee meeting minutes say aye. 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 Uh, thank you, Commissioner Holland. Number 20, this would be old business for the Board of Commissioners meeting. I'm looking okay. for yeah. oh, old business, Commissioner Rappaport. I, I know this is getting old. I have a few things. Um, I wanted to follow up and just ask, maybe I missed it, but we were going to have... Uh, I think our solicitor or somebody looked into, we tabled the issue of the unregistered all-terrain vehicles. Uh, there was gonna be some kind of ordinance and we, I think tabled it for further, further review by our solicitor. And I just didn't know if that had, if that was still in the process. Uh, I think I need to meet up with uh, Andy Freemuth, because I wasn't there for that particular meeting. I think I tried to find from the minutes what the discussion was and how it should be changed. Because I guess I, I need to clarify exactly what changes the board was considering. 
And I don't remember either. I just, I know it had come up in a previous, I think it was public safety. Um, and it, it went through, I, I think even a couple of months and it's going to go out for, uh, for advertisement. And then it didn't, um, set some questions about the wording. I think if What's we can next? identify the agenda that it was on, Allison can pull the video. And What's that next? She can and? give uh, Joe a link so he can see what the discussion was. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, 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 I'll confer with Allison and I'll try and find what the, the suggested changes were and make them. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll wait and just do some new business and be done with it. Any, anybody else who has any old business? Not seeing any hands. I'm going to move on to new business for the Board of Commissioners meeting. Excuse me. Com uh, Commissioner Arman. I was going to say, I think Ann has some. <laughs> Thank you, President Norris. Um, just two sort of announcements rather than new business. Um, the first uh, announcement is that um, as soon as possibly Monday, October the 4th, the um, area of West Waverly um, between Harrison Avenue and Easton Road is anticipated to be closed as part of the road realignment on the Glenside Wawa project. So um, uh, I would ask uh, Mr. Township Manager if we could post that on our website to make sure, uh, and, and our social media feeds to make sure that's out there. I've done that, but, um, but I think it'll be helpful to uh, spread that far and wide. Um, so again, starting as soon as um, uh, October 4th, this, this Monday. Um, the other the other announcement is uh, many of you know uh, October is Fire Prevention Month, and there are um, our volunteer fire companies uh, have lots of events going on throughout the month, including open houses. Uh, Glenside Fire Company has its 5K, so if you want to sign up for that, you can do that. Uh, I think you have to do that by Monday, uh, and uh, as I understand it. Uh, Cheltenham Fire Company is also having a shredding event, which uh, takes place, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Saturday. Saturday, yeah. So um, that's that's all I wanted to announce. Thank you, uh, President Norse. Thank you, Commissioner Armand. Commissioner Brockington. Thank you. I just wanted to remind folks on the east end of the township that on Monday, October 4th, 7 p.m., I will be having uh, a town hall meeting. Um, we are coming up with an agenda, but mostly we, we want to hear you. We want to listen to you. So please um, get on Zoom. The information is on the township website, how to um, participate in this meeting. Again, it's Monday, October 4th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank and you, I Mr. haven't President. forgotten you, uh, but I'm going to jump to uh, Teresa. You have your hand raised. That may be from the other... Oh, time. Okay. Uh, if Teresa doesn't jump in, Anne, did you have something else? Yes, thank you. Um, so I wanted to follow up uh, again from the discussion from yesterday's uh, comprehensive planning meeting, um, where several of the planners advocated for us to be more consistent with what the other municipalities are doing in terms of requirements uh, in our saldo for fees in lieu of green space. Uh, and what I'd like to do is ask our staff uh, or you know, administration, whoever uh, should be taking charge of that area to look into how the other municipalities are doing this in their saldo or zoning or however they're doing it and what we might need to do to facilitate it, whether it's a um, uh, some kind of recreational open space study or whatever it is, um, or just the language that we would need to, um, to amend uh, possibly our saldo. And um, if no other committee wants it, I'll take it at public affairs either next month or the following month. But uh, the, the urgency on this, of course, has significance directly and immediately on our budget on our property values uh, and uh, on our uh, um, stormwater management 
as well as sustainability and climate change. So um, I appreciate your attention to this. And uh, I, I think uh, Mr. Sekawunga was also at the meeting and um, sort of knows what this is all about. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Anna. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Sigmundfeld. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make the comprehensive plan meeting, but just a question, I guess, generally, and then also to Commissioner Rappaport. The comprehensive plan, you know, has uh, an extensive number of issues that we're dealing with. I don't think necessarily we should be doing at this point piecemeal kinds of things to, to delve into specific things. I think at this point, we're still in the early phases of identifying some of the issues that we're going to have to undertake over the next probably year and that kind of thing. And, and specifically to start to, to move into issues that are um, common in other municipalities in our, you know, that may or may not be germane to our saldo. I just think this, you know, it's a little early and I find that, you know, it's pulling the trigger on something that probably at this point uh, does not need to be addre addressed other than in some of the broad things that, that we're trying to do. We, well, we actually, yeah. um, I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, finish up. No, I'm, the only thing I'll say is we are in that early phase of discussion and, you know, not every, uh, I'm assuming that not every member of the comprehensive plan committee was there. I don't know, and, and I, I don't think this group knows where the county stands on that. So I, I just think yeah. that's something that, I'll, let me just finish, um, that I think that part of this should be some of the guidance from Aaron Holly and the county would go a long way to helping us think about those things, but to start our efforts to formulate changes in the saldo, it, it seems premature. So that's my comment as one of the active members of the of the comprehensive plan uh, committee. However, I missed yesterday's meeting, which could have been pivotal and I apologize for my absence. Yeah, Commissioner Rappaport, I, I was yeah. going to suggest that the count, that whether we've reached out to the county, especially if we're looking at how other townships are doing. Yeah, let, let me clarify how this came up because I, I did not raise this. This was raised uh, and, and perhaps Mr. Sekawangu wants to, to uh, talk to this tonight. This came up in terms of um, things that that Aaron Holly, who obviously is chairing these meetings, was also there and and participating in that discussion. Um, it was also raised by uh, representatives of the planning commission who were there, and also our zoning hearing board representatives. So it, it was not me. This was a um, a sidebar, in a sense, to the other duties that we're doing as a comprehensive plan. It was simply a forum that pointed out that this township is lagging behind what developers are expecting to see in Saldo. We are leaving not only money on the table, uh, but we are uh, behind expectations as far as how we are managing stormwater, where we could be doing better by, by getting these donations by, um, uh, you know, so, so this was not me, this was not, this was coming through the county mechanism. And um, what I'm asking is for staff to do whatever we need to do to rectify as we always do, or you know, as we do uh, map changes and ordinance changes, uh, improvements to the zoning code, improvements and amendments to our saldo, which we have already been doing, this came up and we need to be looking at wording and provisions that might enable us to get the money that is sitting on the table that seems so important to us at a critical time in our budget process. So as we can move simultaneously with our budget and with finding out if there is a fix to this that's consistent with what our neighbors are doing, 
seems like a no-brainer. Mr. the second one go? Yes, I was just going to add, uh, I know as part of the discussion on the Saldo, we were looking specifically at open space. Uh, there will be several other uh, aspects of, this, of the comprehensive plan, not Saldo. There will be several other aspects of the comprehensive plan that we will be looking at, but I think the framework of this was, uh, was fees in lieu of. So one of the topics that came up, and again, as part of that meeting, it was agreed that this discussion will be continued uh, at the next meeting when uh, more of the uh, attendees are there, specifically some of our um, esteemed commissioners. Uh, but I think the discussion centered around continuing that discussion, but I'm sure that as part of the other sections of the ordinance, I'm sorry, of the, of the, uh, uh, the comprehensive plan that we will be looking at, there will be other aspects that will come up that trigger some kind of fee in lieu of from developers. So again, I, I think we, we may want to wait until we get through all the other, the other aspects of the, uh, of the comprehensive plan. Thank you for that, Mr. Sekawangu. Okay, so there's, there's no further action we need to take on that then tonight. Any other comments or questions? Any other new business items? Citizens Forum for the commissioner's meeting? Emily Steinberg, I believe you have your hand raised. Yes, hi. Um, I just have a quick comment to make about um, kind of the increasing uh, ATV, all-terrain vehicle, loud, like horrible racing noises that are kind of, it's just happening more and more and more. And we've been talking with a lot of our neighbors and everyone is kind of freaking out about it. And um, it's weird. It's like I go to the gas station and I see these young kids pull up in their cars and they're the ones who are doing it. And then they like zoom off in their thing. And I just, I don't really have anything to say other than that I'm just reporting what it's like on the ground and I don't know what to do about it. I know Philadelphia is having a horrible time with it. Um, I actually experienced it myself down on the East River Drive the other day. Um, and I just don't, it's just really kind of scary. So don't know what to do, but that's, that's what's that's happening. The, that's the problem, Emily, is we don't know what to do either because these are exhausts that um, are coming standard on some of the vehicles wow. and, and they're street legal, you know, is what Chief Fry said in the past, and there's not really anything you can do. Um, so we're sort of in this tough situation where, you know, you can't write them a ticket because. Right. You know, but I'm just wondering, is this sort of the way things are going to be going forward? Like, is this sort of, you know, what we can be expected to be as normal normal kind of behavior in the coming years or? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I think, I think, uh, I'm sorry, Dan. I, I mean, I think what ultimately will happen, hopefully in, in the future, and we may not be here to experience it, is that electric vehicles will come in and all that stuff will go away and it'll be so darn quiet uh, because everybody's driving electric, but that's probably a hundred years out. Um, what we can do until then, I think, Commissioner Norris was was going to come up with a solution right now. <laughs> no, not necessarily a solution, but I was going to commiserate with you, Emily. I I just uh, I received a couple of emails from residents complaining about that today, and and frankly, uh, I complain about it. It it has been a problem, uh, particularly on any of the more major streets in our township. Um, so it's it's not just the loud exhausts. Um, it whether you call it drag racing or the speeding. Right. Um, so um, I don't necessarily have a solution. I have brought it to our uh, police chief's attention. We do need to have our police uh, department spend more time on traffic enforcement and slowing down vehicles. Um, and, uh, and in cases where uh, it is a, a noise issue, uh, perhaps there uh, might be something to do if the car gets pulled over 
um, more than once. Um, maybe they'll, uh, because I have a feeling in some of these cases, it's not just that they're buying the cars uh, off the lot that way, they're souping them up to make them right. louder than they than they could be. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what's scary is like, is this sort of becoming the new normal? And it's not just here, I think it's, you know, it's kind of a, yeah. it's sort of a um, civilization thing. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we, we experience it more than um, many other townships because we do have a lot of through traffic and we do right. have a lot of streets um, that, um, that permit or encourage speeding. So, yeah. So okay, we, well, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just briefly yes. on that, um, I'll be working with the solicitor looking at the noise ordinance and establishing what is a decibel sound rating that actually can be monitored for this sound. Um, it is interesting that um, I didn't know that the Dover Raceway and Pocono Raceway for NASCAR has moved to Cheltenham Township uh, because it, it, the, no, it, the sound is getting, is getting louder. It is getting worse. Um, and as Commissioner Holland spoke about, you know, determining what is legal and what is not legal, I think the way to try to hit this is with the sound uh, ordinance to where we're actually able to uh, monitor the decibel ratings at this. But I do also just want to say it's not just young kids that are driving this. There are older adults that love the sound of these cars that sound like they're just coming on pit row at NASCAR. But um, again, this is a way that I think we can try to uh, attack this is based on the decibel readings and noise. Thank you, Mr. Bob. President. I, I want to kind of comment behind Bob. Bob, I like what you're doing, but would that also sort of include motorcycles? like regular motorcycles that I find are just as loud as the ATVs when, you know, five motorcycles come down your street and they're just, you know, they're, these are guys who are out, out there just riding their motorcycle, but they're loud. It, it would. And a lot of that too, is there are um, illegal modifications that are made to the pipes on motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And again, that creates that thunder noise that goes through there. I know that there's pipes that, you know, you can buy that give that rumble but some are over the top beyond what that legal legal limit is. So that decibel rating will be able to hit everything. Dan. Thanks, Bob. Can Commissioner Pransky. Can I say one, yeah. one, one more thing? This is really, you know, just sort of a global perspective on it. Oh, In right. Germany, this stuff is not allowed. Like they just, they do not allow people to disturb the peace like that. So it's really kind of interesting how because we have such a free society or such an independent society, this is the byproduct of it. Um, Commissioner Pransky. Thank you. Um, the, the difficulty is, because this has come up many times, there are state requirements that have to be met. They might not be the same ones that we would like. And so something can go in for inspection and legally pass inspection. Uh, not, not, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about a bike or an ATV modified with TT pipes and things like that, or a, a big set of glass packs to make it sound as noisy as they can. Uh, yeah, Bob, I know about a lot, a lot of those things. Um, <laughs> but uh, the fact is, if you get, pick any brand of motorcycle with legal manufacturer pipes, put four or five of them together, you're going to hear a sound. Mm. If you get four or five Dodge Chargers coming down the street, you're going to get a noisy sound. Mm. So while we want to craft something, you need to make sure of two things. First of all, the mod, that whatever is on the car is legal according to the state or not. And secondly, do we have a method of enforcement and how are we going to enforce it? In other words, are police going to be carrying around sound meters with them? Um, and, you know, and how is this going to be ascertained? So I agree with the whole principle of the thing. It's just that it's going to get more complicated the more you get into it. Mm -hmm. Emily, as you can see, uh, we are very interested in this discussion and we will be pursuing uh, various uh, ideas to try and improve the situation. Um, yeah. Could, not, could I? I'm sorry. Teresa, Are you ready? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, 
I um two incidents. One was Saturday night. I was about ready to call 9119 emergency because it was so loud. I was sure they were ATVs on Washington Lane. And no sooner did I get to the phone than all the cop car siren, sirens went off. There were about three or four um, cop cars that arrived at the corner of Washington and Church Road. I heard the sound again and then it was gone. And I did want to ask Chief Fry uh, if they were ATVs because we get this run over or this runoff from Philly because they're not allowed in Philly. And I know uh, folks up here have him. Um, so, oh, there's Chief Fry. Yeah, so, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with uh, with that incident. I'd have to look into it for you. Yeah, there was, there was a whole lot of cop cars on the corner. I guess it was late Friday or Saturday night. I think it was Saturday night. But um, I, Washington Lane is just uh, above the noise. It's extremely dangerous. Uh, when I make that left-hand turn off a church onto Washington Lane, um, I have to be so careful because the the kids come up and they run the light and they I've gotten hit um, rear ended a not almost a number of times and they just appear out of nowhere because they're running a light and I'm just trying to make the left and um, I'm not really a timid driver <laughs> when I if when I go in Washington Lane, I'm very alert and I'm not so timid about my driving. I really pay attention because it's like Mad Max at that intersection. So that is one incident that, uh, I don't know, they look like they were all our cop cars and then it stopped. Um, the other occurrence that happens around uh, between four and five o'clock quite often is that there's a vehicle that comes past the house, all the windows shake. It is the loudest boom, and it's not its not like music boom. It's just like this boom. It's really, really loud. And then it stops, and then it happens again. And then it stops, and it happens again. And all the windows shake. It's just so disturbing. And it's becoming more and more frequent on church. Is right? there any chance for you to get a copy of the license plate, send that along yeah. to the police? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm on okay. traffic Thank watch a lot. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Teresa. Um, thank you. So uh, be before I ask for a motion to adjourn, uh, I'm just going to uh, ask Allison. Uh, Allison, we're going to be having an executive session following this meeting. Is there any way for you to end to end the recording of this meeting? Oh, and when everyone leaves, traffic. the commissioners will, will remain Why on. Why can't they send the cop around? Mr. Dan. President, we yeah. sent another link out. Oh, you did? To the board. Thank you. I did not see that. Okay. I retract that. Then I will take a motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.